Hi, my name is Suzy Kim, and I'm a historian of Korea, focusing on North Korea. There are many challenges to doing um, research on North Korea. It's very difficult to get there, and even when you get there, you don't necessarily have access to the archives. But I would have to say that probably the largest challenge in terms of doing research on North Korea are some of the biases that we bring to the topic. So North Korea is oftentimes known as a very isolated place, uh, dominated by male leaders, um, that it's irrational and crazy. So just as, a, as an example, a very quick example of one of the news stories that was circulated throughout the world as a result of some of this bias was the fact that North Korea had discovered a unicorn lair. Now that sounds crazy, and so people ended up using this as a way to say that North Korea was in fact crazy. But in fact, what happened um, after a little bit of footwork was that North Korea had discovered an archaeological site that made reference to a mythical creature at that site um, in one of the rock carvings. Um, and essentially, when they were translating the name for this mythical creature, they didn't have an equivalent in English, and so they translated that into unicorn. So among um, some of the other biases that I referenced earlier was the fact that um, North Korea is isolated, that North Korea is dominated by male leaders. And undoubtedly, some of, the, some of these aspects are true. But if you look at the history of North Korea, particularly um, before the fall of the Soviet bloc, North Korea was actually quite active throughout the world. Um, and it's not always necessarily dominated by um, men um, in this history. So um, one example is the fact that there was a major North Korean women's organization, which still exists today, called the Korean Democratic Women's Union. And when it was formed in 1945, it joined the Women's International Democratic Federation, which was a left-leaning pro-Soviet organization that actually still exists, despite the fact that the Soviet Union is no longer in existence. It basically gave the platform not only to the women in the socialist bloc, but also women in the third world to engage very actively internationally, and North Korean women were no exception. Um, the very first leader of the Korean Democratic Women's Union, Park Jung-hye, was actually president of that organization for 20 years. And if you look at the archival record of the WIDF, um, she pops up here and there, being very active as a, a, a member of the leadership, um, participating in solidarity actions. Um, and so um, I think it's a very good example of the ways in which women have played a central role in North Korean history, especially in the international context. And this is what my research hopes to uncover.